Welcome everybody to this brief look at the IBM PS1 computer. So this was one of the first modern personal computers produced around 1990. Although it is based on Microsoft DOS or IBM DOS as it was known, it predates Windows. So it has this really cool custom UI produced by IBM, which is called V4 Quad. So it has all the stuff you'd expect on an early 90s PC. So you've got a file manager, office software, that kind of thing. What's really cool about this emulator is that it emulates the entire unit. So it's got these switches here on the bottom of the screen and you can move those to adjust the brightness of a virtual CRT, which is really cool. So let's start by taking a look at some of the features of the IBM operating system. I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can get a better look at the screen. So we'll start by taking a look at the information section, which is more interesting than it sounds. So in this section, you're going to find a lot of things that require a network connection. So here we've got a users club. So remember, this was in the days before Netscape Internet Explorer. So the users club was a way for users of these machines to connect with each other. There were bulletin boards, chat rooms, that kind of thing. And everybody had a look at how cool and retro this is. And everybody had their own username and password like for old days of ICQ, AOL. So if we click help, it tells you how to log on. And apparently my username and password are in my startup kit. I must have left that at home or the dog ate it or something. I don't seem to have one. So that's for users club, which I guess was pretty cool back in the early nineties. If we now look at, we're not gonna look at all of these things. We'll just look at the interesting stuff. But if we look at, I think it's for Prodigy service. So this was a service where you could, it was kind of like a, an e-commerce thing. You could buy airline tickets. Um, you could look at news stories. So again, you had uh, a username and password. Of course, our sign in wasn't correct. So if we now take a look at the system tutorial, this is pretty cool because it kind of holds your hand through the process of using the system because of course back then a keyboard and a mouse were largely foreign concepts so we've got this entire section that's dedicated to how to use a computer so there's even a tutorial for the tutorial so the introduction section explains what the tutorial is and how to use the tutorial which is really quite bizarre but it was back in the day when like I said, these things were completely foreign and you had to make the user feel at ease with this new technology and explain absolutely everything step by step in a way they can understand. I do like some of the little icons that you get in the tutorials tutorials. So this shows you a picture of a physical machine. This is what you would have had in front of you with the keyboard and the mouse. We're going to dig into a few of the sections in here, not all of them, but a few of the, the interesting ones. So if we look at the keyboard and the mouse sections in the hardware part of the tutorial, for example, there's actually, as well as sort of the basics of how to use the mouse and what a mouse looked like, it also gives you some little exercises to do to, to kind of get used to using the mouse. So it's going to teach us how to drag, drop and double click. And the exercise we do in a minute is we have to double click on a color. So choose a color and then we have to drag a colored square. And that kind of demonstrates that, hey, you can do this. You can use a mouse. You understand the basic concepts of how to operate a computer. So that's pretty cool. It's a neat little touch and it feels very retro in the 21st century go into the keyboard section of course it obviously explains what a keyboard is and where the keys are it actually makes the analogy that some of it is like a typewriter so the key layout is the same as a typewriter of course everybody's used to those right so it should be fairly natural to use a computer based on what you already know so the keyboard exercises are pretty cool it almost makes a, a game of it so you have to move this little orange square into the bottom right corner by using the arrow keys and the enter key to move the other blocks around and make space for that little orange block in, in that corner. So I'm probably doing a terrible job of this. I'm sure someone somewhere has done a speed run of it 
but there we go that is how you how you get used to using the arrow keys and that's how you can um, kind of demonstrate your ability to use uh, a keyboard so we're going to finish clicking through or peek downing through the keyboard section and we're going to check out the display and system unit sections very briefly just because it has some really cool illustrations of the photographic high resolution VGA monitor and the system unit section. I still haven't learned how to get out of these tutorials. I must do the keyboard tutorial again. And the system unit tutorial shows you a really cool picture of what the unit would actually look like. And it also shows you where to insert the floppy disks because of course all the software you needed to use, I think even the system install itself, came on a, a 1.4 meg floppy disk so you had to make sure you could use that and it even takes you through um, stuff like right protecting the disk and all that stuff that you had to know in 1990 so this unit also has um, a physical hard drive which not all of them came with so it obviously had to point that out as well you can also buy a load of accessories for your IBM PS1 so you can buy a super high res dot matrix printer I don't even think it was like an inkjet back then a memory expansion for those super demanding games you're going to be playing in 1990 a joystick uh, an audio card i believe as well as sort of a drive expansion so you can get another floppy drive a five inch floppy drive an adapter card unit for plugging in what even came on isa cards back in the day is it sound cards that kind of stuff i'm not even sure it was way before i got my first pc so in the software section a lot of this is quite boring but it just gives you introductions to the, the software on the PC. We're not going to spend too much time on that. If we look at system care, the preventative care part of it is quite interesting as well. So we're just going to start by looking at how to look after your floppy disks. Don't put them near magnets, near speakers, that kind, that kind of thing. Um, don't put them near strange looking 1970s air conditioning units either. And always keep them in one of those super cool folio cases that you can get at office world so the uh, protective care of a preventative care no food or drink near the computer which i'm sure anyone who was at school in the 90s can relate to and and of course you must also clean your monitor and pc unit with a special kind of cloth so i guess that stops people putting sponges um, and buckets of water over it <laughs> and i'm assuming this basically says don't touch a live plug course the index section at the bottom if you're used to reading books instead of using computers I'm sure that's super useful for you too so we're going to take a look at the file manager so remember this was in the days before Windows so this was before file explorer Windows Explorer so it actually had quite a nice um, quite a nice file explorer where it it showed you the drive structure but in a way sort of using a paradigm that everybody can understand of folders and subfolders so when you click into a folder, it shows you the contents of the folder and you can go up and down through the levels as you might expect. So it's all very sensible. If you go on to the floppy disks, you can switch between floppy disk and hard drive. If you had a floppy disk in there, it would let you run the software that was on that disk. If we take a quick look at DOS, so this is a GUI for, I think it's IBM DOS or PC DOS 4 or something. So it's got all the the normal commands you might use, how to restore your system, you can install software, off diskettes. It's also got a command prompt, of course, but most importantly, it has um, sort of a, a way to program in the, the basic language. So we're just gonna very quickly write a script here and run it. So I guess this is where a lot of a lot of people learn to learn to code in basic. So just a very basic script, we'll run it and there you go. It prints like and subscribe to the screen 10 times. What else would you do for your first um, your first basic script? So we'll get out of that and we'll head back to the main UI. So next up is the bit I'm sure we've all been waiting for, which is a look at Microsoft Works. Prepare to be disappointed. It's actually like, um, it's not a nice shiny IBM styled version. It's just a really old crappy DOS version of Works but it's still usable. You've still got a uh, word processor, spreadsheets, God knows what the uh, database stuff is like. I can't imagine it's that sophisticated. 
got formatting options. You can center your text, you can make it bold. I'm not sure there's a font selection. I think it literally just uses uh, like courier or default system font, but we can use the formatting options here to very quickly write um, quickly write some, some content here, which you might recognize if you watch British TV. So we can save this out. We've written a Word document here, nicely formatted. We can save it to uh, the virtual hard drive here. It will ask me to overwrite because I've you know I've done this before before I demoed it. So we've saved that file to the virtual hard drive. But this is the really cool bit. So if we switch off our IBM PS1 virtual machine, just take one last look at it before we go. If we switch this off and we now go back into our nice shiny 21st century Windows 10 system, we can actually open up the hard drive from the virtual machine, dig into the works folder, and we can then open up that works document we've just produced on our virtual IBM in our modern uh, Windows OS. So of course, we can you can practically use that IBM system to write documents that you then print and send on your modern Windows machine. But there we go, that's a very quick look at the IBM PS1. If there's any kind of interest in these videos, I will do more on playing games and some more sophisticated stuff on this machine as well. But that is all for now. Thank you so much for watching.